Let's ask again an often asked question. Where is the power in our day for signs, wonders, and miracles? Hi, this is Barry Phillips of 10-Minute Torah, Day 5, a Naso, to elevate or lift up. And we are today in chapter 6, Numbers chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Let's read these. And Yahweh said to Moshe, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When a man or a woman does separate by making a vow of a Nazarite, to be separate to Yahweh, he separates himself from wine and strong drink. He drinks neither vinegar or wine or vinegar of strong drink. Neither does he drink any grape juice nor eat any grapes or raisins. All the days of his separation, he does not eat whatever is made of the grapevine from seed to skin. All the days of the vow he separates, or of his separation, a razor does not come upon his head. Under the days are completed for which he does separate himself to Yahweh, he is set apart. He shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow long. All the days of his separation to Yahweh, he does not go near a dead body. He does not make himself unclean for his father or for his mother, for his brother or his sister. When they die because of his separation to Yahweh, it's on his head. All the days of his separation, he is set apart to Yahweh. So we're talking about the Nasir. This is one who has desired to take on limitations or restrictions about things that the Torah permits. The Torah does not outwardly or you know, blatantly say you can't eat grapes or drink wine or have vinegar or you shouldn't cut your hair. These things certainly are permitted in the Torah. However, here is one who, man or woman, who determines that they will further restrict themselves for a specified period of time. This is you know, there are those that were called to be in the seer from the time of birth to their death. Simshon or Samson, as we say, was one such person. It has been debated, uh, I think correctly so, perhaps, that Yochanan the Immerser, John the Baptist, was a Nasir. So there are those who have made this vow of separation that they will take upon themselves further restrictions, even calling tame unclean, that which the Torah says is tahor, or clean. So why would one do this? Well, a key perhaps is found in some words here. When it says, when a man or woman does separate, that word separate, by making a vow of a Nazarite to be separate to Yahweh, separate and separate. The first word here, separate, is the Hebrew word pala. It is a pei, a lamed, and an aleph. And it, um, it means to be marvelous, to be wonderful, surpassing, extraordinary, to be separated to or by distinguishing actions, doing what is difficult or difficult to understand. Certainly this would allude to the arena of those things that are considered wonderful, miraculous, signs, the wonderful things. The second word that we see then where it says to be separate to Yah. It is the word Nasar, where we get Nasir from. And it simply means to dedicate or consecrate. These two words then together should give us an understanding of being dedicated and consecrated to distinguish yourself to living and actions that are wonderful or marvelous to be able to do the extraordinary and to work signs, wonders, and miracles. So what we should understand perhaps from this is that there's not just a, a sudden anointing that comes upon someone with a voice from heaven say, go lay your hands on the sick and they will recover. 
there has to be some previous something going on. Yah does not just randomly say, uh, I'll take that one. You, you're, you're the guy, you're the lady. There has to be a heart situation prior to. Obviously, then, the, the most um, pertinent example of this would be Yeshua. Yeshua came preaching. He said, I do not come preaching my message. I come declaring what my Father has said. The signs, wonders, miracles, that the actions that I see him doing, those are the things that I'm doing. And one might say, well, you know, he had another agenda. He just wasn't permitted to, to engage in it. No, no, that's a wrong way of understanding that. Yeshua came with the, the uh, explicit purpose. I come to do my Father's will. I don't have another agenda. I don't have another message. The only message I have, the only works that I have, of those of my father. How many of us can say that? I don't have an agenda outside of Yah's agenda. I don't have goals and ambitions that are personal. Rather, they are designed to follow after the heart of the father. My life's mission is to accomplish my life's mission to the honor and the glory of, of Yah. That's that's a heart that we don't normally see. It, it's it's hard to have authority or power or ability without some sense of human pride or uh, status mindsets getting involved. When one suddenly acquires a mass of wealth, you win the lottery. Those who don't understand money and don't understand finances will go on shopping sprees and invite all friends, family, and anyone who wants to ride along to come along. The money's gone. So uh, mega millions is not necessarily our answer. Why? Because power, wealth, prestige, ability corrupts the human nature unless, unless, there is discipline and a righteous understanding of how to walk. Therefore, one may say, I want to be able to be used of the Most High, and I will take upon myself a vow that restricts me and these, these uh, stipulations for a period of time and I'm willing to go through that process in order to, here's the catch, not acquire the power, but to attach myself to the heart of the Most High. This is not power seeking. This is person pursuit. We are seeking the face of the Most High. So therefore, even things permitted to us, we lay them aside and we discipline our affections and our yearnings and even our privileges to seek his face so that we may be used in any way that he would desire, whether that's in power demonstration or word spoken in wisdom or just being the person at the moment for whenever that moment may show up. If we're seeking him, I want the power, I want the power, I want the power so I can heal. What are we thinking? So that we can gain notoriety, so that people would look at us and say, there's the healer, so that people will line up so we can lay our hands on them. Is that what we're after? Yeshua came to glorify and to honor the Father. That has to be our ambition and our motivation as well. So giving up in order to obtain the presence of the Most High is the key. Shabbat Shalom to, to you. I want to take a few extra moments here. I really mean that. I want you to experience His presence, to find His face, to hear His voice, to be encouraged, to find His joy, and to be able to rejoice in the presence of your King. 
May you fill your dwelling, your being, and all those around you. Shabbat Shalom until next week. 